Welcome to Tech Now. I'm your host, John Reed, also CEO of Cat Alliance, and we continue our discussions on cybersecurity. We're joined by Wael Agam, the CEO of Trade Merit and COO of Cloud Mask Inc. Mr. Agam discusses the changing data landscape that represents an opportunity for competitive advantage, but also many risks for both businesses and individuals alike. Mr. Agam makes the case of how and why old security paradigms are and must be replaced by new approaches and new trust solutions. So, Wael, over to you to share your perspectives. During the last few years, the size of information is huge. The information today doubles every two years. At the same time, this information create a significant opportunity for businesses to compete. There are many reports, I don't want to waste your time by saying what these reports are, but the idea of creating what they call the data lake. Data lake is free form data sitting on huge lake that anyone can use. Add to this the capability of linking these lakes with communication line then we can have a real information, global information grids that can provide huge amount of information. It is really reported by 2020, we will have 50 billion connection in the world, vis-a-vis -vis 8 billion human. With this whole thing, the data is becoming so important and it creates something, if we're talking about security, it creates a very high value target. This high value target that has never happened before. That anyone would say, oh, this is normal or that is known before. No, that's not. Because creating the high value, now we have a state sponsored attack. We have what's called the stealth attack, that is, the target is to collect your information without knowing. Then, with this really high risk, you need to have a completely new. Paradigm. This is a paradigm shift in the security that will enable you to use and use all this capability. Then that is the main issue about security today. The old way works when we have a very defined boundary for organization. Then what they call breach prevention. I can build huge walls around me to protect me. With the new paradigm, that is not the case. You don't have a wall. If you build this wall, I'm not saying that you can't, you can, but you are you losing a huge competitive advantage and all your competitors will be surplused of many times. If you want to build around you a, a, a walls to live within it, tough luck. I don't think that you will do anything. Then the idea of breach prevention is, is gone we need to think how can I secure breach? I need to start my risk analysis with a clear assumption what will happen, not if, but when I will be breached. That is the major shift in thinking. Never ever think that you will not be breached because the forces that try to attack you is much bigger than you. It is have many, many capabilities that is beyond your capability. Then position yourself that what will happen when I will be breached. It is actually the unique solution that is, exists today, and this is not only Cloud Mask. There are five, six companies all over the world is providing a similar solution. But uh, of course, we are better. <laughs> that is, I don't want to say that, but that is, that is, we have a unique proposition. What is this solution? The solution is based on what we call zero trust model. I will never trust anyone, my employee, my administrator, my cloud provider, my government, no one. The problem with the current trust model is based on what they call implicit trust. If we work on the same company, then for sure we trust each other. If you are my administrator, I should trust you. That does not work, it will never work, because you don't know where your data is. The real issue here, you need to implement what say explicit trust model. I am the owner of the data, no one in the world, not government, no anyone, 
had the right to see it. He cannot see it. Only people that can see it is the people that I trust and I implicit give them the right to access it. The technology that we are providing is really encrypt and tokenize the data on all their three stages, which is data in transit, data in process, and data in storage. Then, if I give you a very simple example to make this a reality, if we talk about Salesforce, for instance, Salesforce is a program, which is a software as a service. And with Salesforce, if you encrypt all the data and send it to the Salesforce, Salesforce will, of course, as an application, will reject your data because the data is not numeric and the field is supposed to be numeric and so on. The technology that we are providing, we really encrypt and tokenize the data in a way that will make Salesforce functionality will work normally as if the data is clear. Then you have all the capability of the search and sort and all the type of thing. However, neither Salesforce administrator can see it, neither the government, if they come the court, order Salesforce to provide them with the data, they will not see anything. And this actually addresses many things like data sovereignty, localization of data, and many other issues.